Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar was the third Mughal emperor who significantly strengthened the empire earning his reign the title of the golden period of Mughal rule Akbar's birth occurred during a critical time for his father Humayun who had lost control of the Indian empire years earlier when Sher Shah captured it leading Humayun to seek refuge in Umar court When Humayun eventually regained his throne Akbar was only 14 years old Akbar under the regency of Bairam Khan was engaged in a war against Sikandar Suri in the Siwalik ranges when received the news of his father's demise and under the guidance of Bairam Khan he was proclaimed the new emperor of Hindustan this marked the beginning of the conflicts in the region with the suris being the most formidable adversaries he moved one of their hindu ministers seized delhi and agra and declared himself the new emperor of hindustan in response akbar accompanied by bairam khan and the mughal military marched towards delhi the two forces confronted each other at the historic battleground of panipat the very state where akbar's grandfather babur had achieved victory over the lodhis in the past on november 15 1556 the second battle of panipat took place between himu the hindu emperor and the forces led by akbar during the battle himu sustained a critical injury from an arrow and lost his eyesight witnessing their leader's condition His army was engulfed in panic leading to a decisive victory of the Mughal forces. Following the successful suppression of other rebellions, the Mughal empire experienced a period of peace. When Akbar reached the age of 17, he suggested Bairam Khan that he should relinquish his responsibilities and undertake the Hajj pilgrimage. This suggestion indicated Akbar's desire to handle his affairs independently without Bairam Khan's interference Bairam Khan who had served as Humayun's minister was appointed as Akbar's regent initially accepted the advice peacefully however he later rebelled against Akbar leading to his arrest by Jang emperor's army despite the rebellion Akbar chose to pardon Bairam Khan and allowed him to embark on a journey to visit Makkah tragically during his pilgrimage Bairam Khan was assassinated following the death of Bairam Khan Akbar took the initiative to appoint educated individuals to his court nine particularly renowned and celebrated scholars known as the nine jewels or noratans Akbar himself lacked formal education however he endured to compensate for this by immersing himself in literature in his court Akbar appointed scholars, poets and philosophers who were responsible for reading and interpreting religious, historical and political books for him. The court took on the task of translating numerous Sanskrit scripts into Persian. Abu Fazl, one of the nine jewels, authored the renowned Akbar Nama, a chronicle of Akbar's reign. Akbar displayed exceptional intelligence and implemented various significant reforms during his rule. Among the most crucial one was the land reform which aimed to alleviate the tax burden on the people. Akbar established comprehensive laws governing various aspects of society. Notably, he introduced prohibition of alcohol, prostitution and child marriage during his reign. He conducted a comprehensive census throughout his empire. and established separate schools for muslims and hindu education additionally akbar focused on strengthening the military system ensuring the empire's security one of his noteworthy decisions was the abolition of jizya tax for non muslim exemplifying his policy of religious tolerance historian has lauded akbar's exceptional intelligence which was further enriched by his association with the intellectuals like abu fazl and fazi whose company greatly contributed to his intellectual growth recognizing the hindu majority in india akbar came to the realization that sustaining minority rule without their support would be challenging to gain their favor he extended various privileges to the hindu community in pursuit of strengthening ties akbar married a hindu princess named jodabai who later became the mother of his son jahangir 
During his rule, Akbar introduced a new religion known as Deen e Ilahi, which aimed to combine elements of Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, and Sikhism. Some notable features of Deen e Ilahi included attending the court every Sunday, wearing a turban in hand and tilak on the forehead. The method of salutation involved saying Allah Akbar with the reply being Jalla Jalla. Adherents were encouraged to perform a 40th ritual during their lifetime. Consumption of meat was prohibited. Ban on congregational prayers of Friday and Eid. Fasting and Hajj were considered less significant. Instead of Eid, Akbar declared Noroz as a state festival. Furthermore, Akbar imposed a ban on name associated with Prophet Muhammad and Ahmad, even removing Muhammad from his own name. Although some Hindu historians praised Akbar's policies, considering them a step toward Hindu-Muslim unity, only a few individuals accepted the new faith, Dine Ilahi. The final days of Akbar's life were marked by great sorrow, as he endured the excessive death of his trusted nine Jews, followed by the loss of two of his own sons. Prince Murad and Prince Daniel's misconduct and excessive drinking ultimately led to their death. With a heavy heart, Akbar kept a watchful eye on the remaining son, Prince Salim, who later ascended to the throne as Emperor Jahangir. Fearing of Salim's well-being and wanted to shield him from making similar mistakes, Akbar tried to protect him from negative influence. However, Prince Salim rebelled against his father and took a toll on Akbar's health. And at the age of 63, the great Mughal emperor passed away, leaving behind a remarkable legacy despite the challenges he faced in his later years. Akbar was the third Mughal emperor who significantly strengthened the empire, earning his reign the title of the golden period of Mughal rule. Akbar's birth occurred during a critical time for his father Humayun, who had lost control of the Indian Empire years earlier when Sher Shah captured it, leading Humayun to seek refuge in Umarkot. When Humayun eventually regained his throne, Akbar was only 14 years old. Akbar, under the regency of Bairam Khan, was engaged in a war against Sikandar Suri in the Siwalik Ranges when received the news of his father's demise and under the guidance of Miram Khan, he was proclaimed the new emperor of Hindustan. This marked the beginning of the conflicts in the region, with the Suris being the most formidable adversaries. Himu, one of their Hindu ministers, seized Delhi and Agra and declared himself the new emperor of Hindustan. In response, Akbar, accompanied by Bairam Khan and the Mughal military, marched towards Delhi. The two forces confronted each other at the historic battleground of Panipat, the very state where Akbar's grandfather Babur had achieved victory over the Lodhis in the past. On November 15, 1556, the Second Battle of Panipat took place between Himu, the Hindu emperor, and the forces led by Akbar. During the battle, Himu sustained a critical injury from an arrow and lost his eyesight, witnessing their leader's condition. His army was engulfed in panic, leading to a decisive victory of the Mughal forces. Following the successful suppression of other rebellions, the Mughal Empire experienced a period of peace. When Akbar reached the age of 17, he suggested by Ram Khan that he should relinquish his responsibilities and undertake the Hajj pilgrimage. This suggestion indicated Akbar's desire to handle his affairs independently without Bairam Khan's interference. Bairam Khan, who had served as Humayun's minister, was appointed as Akbar's regent, initially accepted the advice peacefully. However, he later rebelled against Akbar, leading to his arrest by Jang Emperor's army. Despite the rebellion, Akbar chose to pardon Bairam Khan and allowed him to embark on a journey to visit Makkah. Tragically, during his pilgrimage, Bairam Khan was assassinated. Following the death of Bairam Khan, 
Akbar took the initiative to appoint educated individuals to his court. Nine particularly renowned and celebrated scholars known as the Nine Jewels or Noratans. Akbar himself lacked formal education. However, he endured to compensate for this by immersing himself in literature. In his court, Akbar appointed scholars, poets and philosophers who were responsible for reading and interpreting religious, historical and political books for him. The court took on the task of translating Nambiya's Sanskrit script into Persian. Abu Fazl, one of the nine jewels, authored the renowned Akbar Nama, a chronicle of Akbar's reign. Akbar displayed exceptional intelligence and implemented various significant reforms during his rule. Among the most crucial one was the land reform, which aimed to elevate the tax burden on the people. Akbar established comprehensive laws governing various aspects of society. Notably, he introduced prohibition of alcohol, prostitution and child marriage during his reign. He conducted a comprehensive census throughout his empire and established separate schools for Muslims and Hindu education. Additionally, Akbar focused on strengthening the military system, ensuring the empire's security. One of his noteworthy decisions was the abolition of jizya texts for non-Muslims, exemplifying his policy of religious tolerance. Historians have loaded Akbar's exceptional intelligence, which was further enriched by his association with the intellectuals like Abu Fazl and Fezi, whose company greatly contributed to his intellectual growth, recognizing the Hindu maturity in India. Akbar came to the realization that sustaining minority rule without their support would be challenging. To gain their favor, he extended various privileges to the Hindu community. In pursuit of strengthening ties, Akbar married a Hindu princess named Jodabai, who later became the mother of his son Jahangir. During his rule, Akbar introduced a new religion known as Dine Ilahi, which aimed to combine elements of Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, and Sikhism. Some notable features of Dine Ilahi included attending the court every Sunday, wearing a turban in hand and tilak on the forehead. The method of salutation involved saying Allah Akbar with the reply being Jalla Jalla. Adherents were encouraged to perform a 40th ritual during their lifetime. Consumption of meat was prohibited. Ban on congregational prayers of Friday and Eid. Fasting and Hajj were considered less significant. Instead of Eid, Akbar declared Noroz as a state festival. Furthermore, Akbar imposed a ban on name associated with Prophet Muhammad and Ahmad, even removing Muhammad from his own name. Although some Hindu historians praised Akbar's policies, considering them a step toward Hindu-Muslim unity, only a few individuals accepted the new faith, Dine Ilahi. The final days of Akbar's life were marked by great sorrow as he endured the excessive death of his trusted nine Jews, followed by the loss of two of his own sons. Prince Murad and Prince Danyal's misconduct and excessive drinking ultimately led to their death. With a heavy heart, Akbar kept a watchful eye on the remaining son, Prince Salim, who later ascended to the throne as Emperor Jahangir. Fearing of Salim's well-being and wanted to shield him from making similar mistakes, Akbar tried to protect him from negative influence. However, Prince Salim rebelled against his father and took a toll on Akbar's health. And at the age of 63, the great Mughal emperor passed away, leaving behind a remarkable legacy despite the challenges he faced in his later years.